Hey, it's Kent here from Apprentice Recruit, and I thought I'd do a video uh, because I've had a, a number of inquiries over the last few weeks from people that are out there looking for work. And this isn't just uh, aimed at the apprenticeship market, it's aimed at just applying for jobs in general. And I suppose looking for uh, different techniques and different ways that they can be out there applying for work. Because uh, I've done some videos previously about things like job boards and quoted percentages on people that are getting jobs through job boards themselves, so like Seek and Indeed and Jora and a whole stack of other ones that are out there. And uh, what I've been, and there's only about 7% of people, by the way, that actually do get their job through a job board. So very, very small numbers of people that do. So uh, the number one thing that I really uh, reiterate with people that they can do themselves is to get out there and, and physically knock on doors. So, well, whether that be physically or whether it be uh, phoning companies within their geographical location to find out whether they've got any work going and to be able to put their foot forward. So um, I know it's not an easy process. And look, it's a process that we go through as far as trying to attract positions in for our company. Um, but look, at the end of the day, if you're not out there knocking on doors, then no one's going to come whilst through your door. So... Um, and I, I have a group of people that I call one percenters, and they're the ones that will actually follow some of the advice that I do give them uh, and the process that they can go through to get something. And if they do follow it, then they will get a job. Okay, so, and uh, it's quite a simple process. It's not an easy process, but it's quite simple. And what I basically tell people to do is, first of all, start in your geographical location and then work out a geographical boundary of where you would like to work within. And then uh, if there's companies, so um, say it's a position for a, um, an electrician, for instance, then ring or go and visit every electrical company that exists in your local area. So I think gone are the days of the old yellow pages, but you can certainly Google companies these days. And there's a whole stack of ways of getting contact details for companies, but that's the first port of call. And then when you're ringing these companies or you're going in and you're visiting these companies, get names and numbers of people. And if you find that when you're talking to these guys uh, and you, you let them know that you are looking specifically for work in that area, and you may also have some experience in that area, then uh, judge how that conversation goes. And if you find that the conversation is quite positive, but they don't have anything going right now, well, diarise that, who the person was and the contact phone number, and then ask if you wouldn't mind if, they, if you could call them back in another couple of weeks or another month or so. And then if they're like, yeah, that's no problems at all, make sure you put it in your diary and actually do it. Um, and then when you ring back the next time round, then you know who you were talking to. You can ask for them by name, which gives you more opportunity than getting through to the next stage of having a conversation. Uh, and then you can let them know that, hey, look, I rang a month ago. I'm still looking for work. My name's blah, blah, blah. My experience is this. Just touching base once again to see if there's any opportunities there. And again, they may turn around and say, no, look, there's nothing going at the moment, but just say, look, do you mind if I give you a call in another couple of weeks or another month and again see if there's anything then? Nine times out of ten, companies won't say no. They'll be quite happy for you to call back. And then what happens is when you ring them in a month's time, like you said you would, and you can also, again, talk to the same person that you've spoken to twice before, they're going to start to pick up on your name, who you are, uh, and probably the biggest thing, just how keen and eager you are. So, And that's the biggest thing because if you ring a company once, like most people, if they only ring us once, then there's a good chance you'll never hear back from us. So whereas once you start ringing two, three, four times, we start to remember who you are, what your name is, where you live, and the sort of position you're looking for. Other companies are no different. So they can use that same approach. So, But the reason that I call people to do this a one percenter is that most people won't do the process. They'll make one phone call, they'll get a no, a rejection, and they'll put it in the two hard basket, and they'll never go back there again. If I did that with my company in getting out there and finding work then or finding jobs that we can then fill for people, then I'd be out of work. I just My business wouldn't work. So again, what I'm talking about here is something that I practice on a daily basis and you need to be disciplined about it uh, to make sure that you can, I suppose, maximise opportunities that are out there. Because a lot of companies, to be honest, are waiting for that right person to walk in their door. A lot of people or a lot of companies don't like advertising. They prefer um, referrals or they prefer um, even walk-ins into their business. Um, so if you happen to be Johnny on the spot where you've applied for that position at the right place at the right time, then that's what will score you a job. The thing is, you don't know when that right place or that right time is going to be. So you've just got to keep at it and you've got to keep swinging the bat. 
Uh, and as I say, look, I, I've used this analogy in a couple of other videos. Uh, a lot of people don't realise that um, the brand KFC, Colonel Sanders, he knocked on over a thousand doors before somebody took his recipe. And the other example I use is Walt Disney. Uh, he knocked on over 400 doors uh, of banks to try and get financed to actually create Disneyland. So that's a lot of knockbacks and a lot of rejection that both of them had to go through. But if they didn't continue doing it, we wouldn't have those two brands today. So, and it'll be the same thing for yourself. If you eventually just give up and crawl up in the corner and go in the fetal position and don't bother knocking on any doors anymore, well, again, it's not gonna to come to you. You've gotta go and find it. Uh, it's called the hidden job market. And again, follow this technique and you'll find that if you put these companies on a callback cycle where you're ringing them consistently to find out if there's further work with them, then ultimately one of them will say, yeah, actually come in and have a chat. And then that chat might lead into maybe doing a couple of days work experience for them. And then from there, that may lead into a job. So every little bit that you do helps. So, and if you want some tips on some, uh, uh, some resume tips, then watch some of my other videos and please feel free to share this to your friends, your colleagues, and uh, anybody else you know that might find this useful. Anyway, it's Kent once again here from Apprentice Recruit. Thanks.